All right, we're going to get started. Thanks for joining me this afternoon. Um, it's Megan Jansen here. I'm the owner of Employee Wellness Solutions Network. We're based out of London, Ontario. We are contractors who help organizations strategize wellness within their work site. Um, I'm really excited today to present an engaging webinar around engagement, um, really starting to plant those workplace wellness seeds as well as optimizing engagement within your workforce. So really excited to be able to do this, especially this month being Healthy Workplace Month um, in Canada. I'm also, it's a pleasure for me to present um, as well to you. Uh, Lovers is a fantastic organization and uh, much respect for Rodney and his crew. So excited to be able to do this exclusively for his group. So we're going to get started. You should be able to see my screen at this point. To kick it off, I like to kick it off with uh, something as simple as this. They tried adding healthy snacks to the office vending machine, but all that rotting fruit made the candy bars taste bad. Interestingly enough, um, intentions are always well intended. Intentions are always um, certainly there, but when it comes down to um, engaging the employee base, sometimes just making something, a small change like this doesn't really get the response that we're wanting. And with that comes uh, frustrations on the other end. So um, in terms of wellness, strategies, initiatives, and putting different things in place sometimes don't provide us the results we're looking for. And so what my intention today is to go through some really um, practical strategies you can try in your workplace that will hopefully have some um, positive impact along the way. So in terms of where we're going, so the trend unfortunately isn't something that is favorable. Um, people are getting unfortunately more overweight. Um, they, there are also some increasing health claims and premiums and drug costs along the way which are crippling organizations. And those of you on the call today I'm sure can certainly uh, relate to seeing some of this or being on the other end of looking at some of the numbers. We also have to keep in mind that um, certainly we have millennials entering the workforce that are gung-ho and ready to roll. Retention can be an issue with sometimes with the millennial side, but then we're also seeing workforces are aging and organizations are experiencing um, older workers staying on longer, which as we age, inevitably there's going to be some illness and disease, um, certainly that, that can happen. So when we're talking about wellness in this way, I'm really going to take the spin on a preventative promotion-based approach that's not a reactive approach. So keep that in mind as we go through some of the information. Now I like to, when I'm presenting um, in, you know, in person, I always say you're going to be um, hearing lots and lots of information today. Um, I'm more than happy to share the slides as well as the recording of this webinar after. So um, if you feel like you can't get everything, um, rest assured that, that I am here as well in case you have any questions. Um, that said, we are uh, wanting to sort of kick this off with um, a distribution of, of some of the disease costs and claims costs that we experience in workplaces. So really uh, down on the simple graphic here, but on the bottom you're going to see a low risk right up to active disease um, state. And this graphic really gives us a nice uh, d cost, uh, claims cost distribution where it comes to the low risk healthy people to the high risk um, and active disease uh, folks and sometimes the older population. So if we take a look at the far right hand side, only 20% of your employee base generate the most of your most of your claims cost. Um, these are the, the people who are really the, the high risk early disease and in disease state, whereby 80% of your employee base um, generate only 20% of your cost. So the objective of a preventative model is to really focus on not necessarily the gym goers and the people that, that are healthy anyway. You will hear ways you can motivate the unmotivated, um, but really focusing on keeping the healthy healthy, implementing wellness strategies that drip on your different learning styles within your population to, to hopefully layer wellness in a message that gets to everybody. So the intention is, is really to offer wellness that is engaging to close to 100% of your population, but I'm um, not necessarily anticipating 100% of your population doing a pedometer challenge as an example, but really focusing on wellness and that wellness message in a way that's engaging and encouraging for people. 
dependent on what level of um, behavior change they are, which we'll get into that as well. So if I were to really look at workplaces, um, I had uh, the opportunity, I've had the opportunity over the several decade, uh, over a decade now, presenting it to groups and HR groups and organizations and employers around what really comes down to a good wellness program to a great wellness program. Um, interestingly enough, I'm coming off of a, of a, a full day um, seminar here. We had a, the Middlesex Health Unit um, put together a, a day on activity in the workplace. And uh, Dr. Michael Rouse is a lead researcher at Ivy here in London who was a uh, re researcher for the Sun Life Corporate Wellness Study that's currently um, taking place. And lots of interesting things that came out of that. Really, we're talking about those great wellness programs that have that comprehensive strategic approach to wellness. So long gone are the days where wellness is a one-size-fit-all. It's really a one-size-fits-nobody. So the good programs are those that have something relating to wellness, um, but not necessarily custom or specific enough for the individuals to really start to change their behaviors. So some of the different examples of wellness at work initiatives initiatives that you may be familiar with include things like sponsoring a team sport. So presenting in Halifax one, one day, like years and years and years ago, and the question came out, how many of you have a wellness program at work? And this gentleman put his hand up and says, I sponsor my softball team at work. That's why wellness program. Another hand went up, we do gym memberships. Another hand went up, we do newsletters. So there's lots of different components to wellness, and sometimes we're so excited to jump on to the next greatest thing like Fitbit as an example and give all of our employees Fitbits, but then what? So we find that these are great components to wellness, but it doesn't give enough of a strategy on why wellness. And so that's what I hope to get across um, as we go through today. So there are three characteristics that make great wellness programs. And um, co-presenting with Dr. Mike Rouse with the Sun Life IV study, as well as hearing him speak for over the last four or five times he's done the presentation, these are three key components to uh, really how do we decipher what's a strategic wellness plan. So the first thing is a supportive leadership. And I'll get through a couple of examples of that and how to communicate your wellness initiatives in your workplace. Um, one of the barriers that comes out with a support leadership is, well, my executive C-suite people are not supportive. That makes it a Mount Everest realistically to climb when it comes to support from them. So it, there are certain things that need to take place in order for wellness to be really um, ch culture changing, and that's one of them. The second uh, is strategic planning, so not just throwing in a lunch and learn or throwing in a Fitbit challenge or throwing in a health fair and hoping to goodness that it's going to make some changes. It's building wellness within the strategy, and I'll talk, to, talk you through that as well today. And then finally, I think one of the most important things is anything you decide to do in your workplace, you want to think of the end result being are changes, are behavior changes happening, or people changing habits. And so it, that's the other piece of making a really great wellness program stick. So the first is optimizing engagement through supportive leadership. As I mentioned, this is a tough one, um, especially if the dynamics of an organization are such that a leadership team might not be supportive in some, in some respects. It does make things a little more difficult. Um, I do want to go through, though, how not necessarily to put an organization like yours in a hierarchy form, but if we were to look at sort of how initiatives are currently communicated uh, within your organization, so I'm going to use the example of wellness. Typically, there's a C-suite, um, which then support middle managers. Middle managers then support frontline staff. So in the event of communicating wellness, a leadership team may very well include wellness within some of their board presentations, some of the staff meetings, etc., to again verbalize that support and encouragement along the way. We do find that, and I'll show you a case study example of how this communication piece made sense to an organization. We also are finding that the executives and leadership team are also going directly to frontline staff and showing the encouragement and support for wellness within workplaces that have that healthy culture. Now, 
organizations that struggle can sometimes um, really see where organizations, uh, with the middle managers or the supervisors, that's sometimes where the wellness message can be lost. So when we're talking about optimizing wellness within your work site, we need to have all everything firing at the same time. And so ideally that middle management piece is a group that does get it and that can also promote wellness within the organization. Another way you can include your frontline staff, your middle managers, and some leadership is forming a wellness committee. So most, um, some organizations that really do feel that wellness is important for their culture will have this already created. Oftentimes, though, what, can, what we find is internally run wellness programs, although they're well intended, they don't typically stick. The novelty can sometimes wear off. You really want to try to maintain the enthusiasm of wellness within your work site. And if you can try to look at, you know, having really keen, enthusiastic volunteers as part of your, your wellness squad, so to speak, those people will really help with your messaging. And so a um, couple of things to remember with wellness champions or wellness committees, you don't necessarily have to have the healthiest, most fittest people on this committee. Even if you have people that really want to, you know, support wellness and wellness within your culture, but might not be the marathon runner, but they still want to be participating, they're well respected in your workplace, bring them on. Um, the other thing is you want to have an inclusive cross-section of your organization. So if you have a main building and then some satellite offices, include those satellite reps within some of your wellness committee phone calls or your wellness committee meetings via conference call, video call, whatever the case may be. So try to think about ways in which you can entice these wellness champions to be really um, into your wellness message. So especially with, with Healthy Workplace Month this month, what a great way to uh, kick this off um, within with respect to creating a wellness champion team or a wellness committee. If you need some ideas on how to create one, email me after and I'm happy to help out. So we talk about communicating wellness in a couple of different ways. There are ways out there that, you know, we want to get the message across that the health fair is coming or we have a speaker coming or we have something going on. You want to think about multiple ways in which you want to communicate wellness and we call this the drip effect. And so we, or a layer approach. So we might, you might have an intranet within your organization that's available for staff. Um, could you have a wellness tab on that intranet with just some recipes, some resources, some information, who your wellness champions are, uh, maybe a suggestion box, uh, just a virtual way of sharing some information. Do you have a corporate newsletter that goes out once a quarter on what's new and great about your organization? Could you designate a wellness champion to prepare or a, a small paragraph or article or recipe on wellness or what's coming up with the wellness program? Could you use that avenue to get some information out? Um, several of our, the organizations we work with also have media boards, so those big TV screens that you might see at the outside of a cafeteria or outside of a, of a, a garage or a yard or on a plant floor. We typically see wellness messaging also used within the media boards. Don't laugh, but bathroom stalls is another really great way to share the wellness message and communicate what's happening. Um, you know, you often see it in the gyms and different places where you're, you know, using the facilities and you read some information while you're there. Um, captive audience, uh, you know, a very, very effective campaign uh, procedure. Poster campaigns, really targeting those people who like to see things. Um, paste up drops sometimes are obsolete because now everything's done virtually, but if there are um, interesting things that can go through Paystub, you may want to think a couple times a year putting something about wellness within Paystub. Uh, mass emails, unfortunately, they get lost, so there are different ways in which you can um, get emails through, and one of the ways is with the senior management um, leader sending an email to frontline staff in a way that's supportive, encouraging, don't forget the pedometer challenge is starting next week, encourage you to participate, I'm going to be getting my pedometer as well, see you down there at the launch as an example. And so there are different ways in which you want to layer the same message, the exact same information, just provided in different ways because you really want to target those learning styles of individuals. And so if you can layer that messaging on, you're more can, you're more apt to get the engagement from your staff when it comes to any initiative specifically as today we're talking about wellness. But just a couple of things to think about when you're talking wellness, how many different ways can you 
make the message known to people without being too overbearing. And this is just different ways you can drip it on people um, along the way. Now, in terms of the supportive leadership team, there is uh, I am I am liking to, to tie a case study to each of these. One of the uh, organizations um, that have have had supportive leaders from the beginning it was a program that that rolled out in 2013. Um, leadership team were oriented uh, initially with the onboarding process, then the middle managers, then staff. So there were three succinct rollout uh, uh, examples. If you were going to do a pedometer challenge or have a health fair at your work site, similar thing could happen. If there's a leadership executive meeting happening, one of your champions can go and do a bit of a you know 30 second commercial on what's going on. Same thing with the departmental meetings, middle management, as well as uh, frontline staff in different ways we've just uh, discussed. This particular organization is in the financial um, industry. They went through two mergers, um, but they've still maintained over 75% engagement. Now, this organization's, you know, in the benefits world, up to about 700 people. So there are much smaller organizations that do receive um, engagement score is this high as well within this way of modeling wellness. So uh, keep that in mind as we go through. Really when it comes down to wellness, it doesn't matter how big your organization is, small, medium or large, if you do the right things, the results are going to follow. And so that's uh, really what the key message today. Now, the second strategy with wellness is strategic uh, and integrative programming. So some organizations have EAP, some organizations are focusing on mental health, some organizations are really um, into some print material, posters, calendars, etc. Instead of just throwing all these different things in, if you can think about a strategy and how you want to, again, communicate this message in a way that makes sense to your employees so it ties everything together. It's a really great approach to do that. So the first thing you want to do is certainly know your four walls. Now, obviously, you would, most of you are going to know this that are on the call today. Obviously, are you in one building or do you have multiple sites across the country, across the province, across your city? Um, do you have millennials? Do you have a working, uh, aging workforce? Force? Are you, you know, male heavy or are you female heavy? Um, where does your demographic shift really look? Is the retention, is the attraction high? Um, is there turnover in your staff? These are all really key things to know ahead of rolling out a wellness plan. Um, and then sort of the environmental piece, are there high traffic areas that you could put some of your posters, um, you know, and some of your stretching charts and, and different things. Uh, cafeteria is another angle, is going to where people are. So not necessarily waiting for people to sign up for things, but you really want to think about messaging your wellness plan in how do you get to the people. So print, print. Um, uh, photocopy your rooms as people are waiting for their prints. They can read some information, um, some a few cards on the table uh, in the cafeteria, as an example, or the coffee coffee shop, something around the water the water cooler or the fridge. So, what ways can you think about physically um, that can really start to entice people to think wellness? So. These are just a couple of strategies that I wanted to include. Within our wellness organizational audit, all of this is determined, so it provides a really great um, succinct strategy in going into how do we make this work. So this particular organization um, started with a health fair, and they had a health fair annually for about five years. This organization is a utility, and they be, they started their company and uh, their program in 2009. They started as a pilot program. The simply reason was is that they couldn't get their heads around how can we promote wellness for the people that work on the telephone poles to the people that are in the office. Like office people, it might just be easier logistically to get wellness to them. But how do we get to the people who are on plant, you know, on the floor, shift work, working outside? What can we do? And so the strategy with this organization was to really run two um, simultaneous but succinct wellness strategies to target the audience. So um, in terms of how the wellness strategy was focused for the, for the field workers was periodically on every um, 
health and safety meeting that they had, there was a wellness component attached to it. So the office, the field workers could gather that wellness uh, strategy within their space. Um, so we weren't able to pull them out off the telephone poles by noon hour to do a lunch and learn, but could we take the information to them as part of their meetings? And that's the way we engaged uh, the field workers. They had an issue with sick days, and so they were um, just under 14 days per employee and over the last um, seven or eight years, um, they have lowered to, to just over seven. So this has been a very significant uh, uh, saving when it comes to sick days. And so um, a lot of these companies I'm talking about also have been rewarded and recognized as healthy workplaces for that reason. They've just had some really great um, sustainability when it comes to their wellness strategy. So that's the second strategy, is is second focus is, is looking on strategy, the, the second uh, area. Now in 2013, Sun Life um, put together a national wellness survey, um, and it, uh, this is a, sort of the one of the quotes that came by. While a majority of employers are committed to providing wellness programs, there remains a gap between the primary health risks identified and the type of program offered. Um, this is, again, one of the errors that um, keen, excited wellness committees or keen, excited employers make is they want to do something. They have no idea where to start. They try something and it doesn't work because either it didn't fit the need or it didn't fit the interest of the population. So really taking a look as to what people are going to want and what people need is a really important thing to consider um, as sometimes as step one when it comes to your program. Uh, let me just see here. So I am more than happy to share this. I had a few people on the last call yesterday morning um, request uh, this as well as a blank one, which I'm happy to share. So I want to take you through what this is. Um, so this is a strategic wellness program that's based on several factors. One, we ran a health risk assessment and the top five areas of focus um, were weight management, improved fitness, nutrition, heart health, and stress. You're going to see at the top of your screen in red, those are the five hot spots of this organization. So knowing full well that you want to run an HRA once a year or once every other year um, to start to see some of the trends on, on people's changing their behaviors and health risks, we wanted to focus this January to June on weight management, fitness, and nutrition all kind of piled into one. Um, so we know that with everything we've talked about so far um, this afternoon, we've talked about, uh, again, layering that wellness message in a way that is inclusive of different learning styles and different people's um, work and shifts, et cetera. But what we did with this is we essentially put together this glance program. And this is what the wellness committees essentially um, help create. And then from there, it's communicated to the different departments, leadership, groups, et cetera. So you'll see along the far left-hand side are several different components of wellness, and then across the top, January to June. And then you're just going to see different things slotted in, overlapping, um, some different, uh, the, the larger campaigns and the challenges like the Healthy Potluck and the Pedometer Challenge are separated by about a month. You don't want to do too much per month, but you don't want to miss the opportunity to really target individuals as well. Just so you know, the three best times to kick something off within your work site is between January and February because of the new year kind of people getting into healthy behaviors, May or June getting into the spring, and September. Uh, getting into the fall after the kids go back to school. So January, May, and September are really key months when you're ever thinking about wellness to start to plan your year around those three time points during the year. Um, so you'll see different things in here, some um, exercise uh, initiatives like walking groups, and we had the, just on Google Maps, provided some maps for people around the building, had some yoga and some stretching going on. We also had the people who, who don't necessarily like the exercise classes, but really like the group 
lunch and learn webinar seminar format. We had some healthy an eight week healthy weights campaign. Um, then for those who just like to try things, we wanted to try you know healthy potluck where people brought something in, um, and then carried on in the spring, really focusing on that exercise piece. We got some teams involved with the pedometer challenge, um, and then the second half of the page is all awareness. So things that are in your face, visuals, bathroom posters, um, email campaigns, or pay stub drop information. We had um, our health coaches and also wellness community members walk around with healthy snacks, um, some information on, on stretching, individual challenges, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, this is what we do, so we are able to really fill six months quite well. Um, so again, if you have keen wellness champions on your team, these these guys are excited about brainstorming, so get them thinking about what ways you might want to really focus in on your wellness strategy for your organization. The third thing that's important to mention is the optimizing engagement through promoting healthy behavior. So um, there's a couple of things that go into this. Um, the first one is really recognizing this piece. Every single person in your organization are on this continuum or readiness to change scale. They're either thinking about wellness or they're actually doing something about their health. Some people haven't seen a doctor in 10 years and have super high blood pressure. Some people are going to the gym every single day and they're very, very low risk. So it's important to understand most organizations with their gym memberships and their stipends and all these wonderful things really are great ideas, but for the company, the organ, the sorry, the individuals that do it anyway. Those are in the action maintenance stage, the people who have their water bottles around all the time, who exercise every day, who are really enthusiastic about their own personal health and wellness. Those are the people that we're really um, targeting when we talk about those types of initiatives versus the people who haven't really thought about it before or not sure where to start. So a smoker, someone who needs to change their health, their eating habits, somebody who it has really low energy, somebody who doesn't exercise are typically, again, in the pre-contemplative, contemplative state of change. So the idea of wellness is to recognize that not everybody is in the same starting point. And so it's more important to layer your wellness strategy and your wellness program to ensure that you're targeting everybody. Um, some people like to read information we left alone. That might be their very first exposure to wellness. Some people want to try that smoothie that one of your champions made or, or if you have a wellness program that one of your, your uh, wellness people made and to take it home to make, have their wives make it. That might be their first touch on wellness. It might not be the pedometer challenge because that's the challenge that's happening this month and those unmotivated people aren't going to participate necessarily. So how can you get those unmotivated people more into it? It's dripping on them periodically. It does not happen overnight. So just keep that in mind. Don't get frustrated. I know it's hard not to, but um, being in this world for so long, it can certainly get uh, frustrating for people. Um, so all of this is going to tie into really what's called a healthy culture. Um, so a couple of things here, just three main points. Um, don't wait for them to come to you. Go get them. Go to the meetings. Go to the health and safety meetings. Go to the board presentations. Have wellness as, as a high-level part of your strategic plan. And that um, communication um, is really beneficial. Some organizations actually create policies around healthy catered meals um, if they're bringing in some lunch meeting, uh, uh, nutrition and, and food, etc. Um, you want to weave wellness throughout your buildings. Nothing's worse than the head office getting everything and the satellite office is getting nothing. So whatever you think about doing for wellness, try to make sure it's inclusive to include everybody. And then finally, integrate what you have available to you. Do you have a cafeteria? Do you have a coffee kitchenette? Do you have uh, boardrooms? What do you have? Might you want to designate Wednesdays as Wellness Wednesdays and have maybe a bowl of apples available? It's October. It's Healthy Workplace Month. There's a reason for it um, to start to show that visible approach when it comes to wellness. Not just information, heavy inf information that they can take and read on their own. You want some visibles as well. Um, so keeping that in mind. Uh, Fresh Fruit Fridays was another campaign that an organization ran. They loved their fruit, so it didn't go bad over the weekend. If you have an organization that loves fruit and veg, Fresh Fruit Fridays would be a great opportunity to maybe offer that to them. Um, 
so again, just a couple of different examples of that, um, and I'd be more than happy to add, answer some questions about this as we continue. I'm almost through this, this part of the presentation. So this is a case study three on behavior change. So this organization did exactly what we just talked about. Their program started four years ago. Um, this is in the GTA. And uh, this organization um, was very diverse. They had a main office hub and they had, at the time, 17 daycares. Now they're up to 33 daycares. So you can just imagine um, trying to include everybody when it comes to how do you get the wellness message across. Um, they also had uh, some strategic pieces pertaining to the community. So they had um, wanted to include their community and their clients within the wellness program as well. Um, their issue was their annual health premium was were increasing double digits every year. And so with the wellness strategy and integrating it within their program and um, access to it by everybody, we saw a reduction in the slope of increase with, wellness, with the health premium. So that was a huge savings for them. So again, uh, recognize it's Healthy Workplace through Benefits Canada, um, and this organization really had that supportive leadership. We str strategized on how to make the wellness message um, make sense, and we really did focus on some behavior change um, programming and to make some, make some really uh, great changes along their way. So in terms of the biggest question of all, okay, Megan, this is all fine and dandy, but I got to sell my CFO on return on investment, return on investment. I can't agree with you more. Return on investment is very important, but it can also cripple initiatives like this if you're focused on it only. Let me put it to you this way. January 1st comes around. You are, you know someone, we've all known someone who's been on the diet wheel where they get their scale out. They are, you know, um, abstaining from junk and they're trying to lose weight and they're doing this and they're restricting this and they're not happy to be around and they get on the scale every day and it doesn't move and they get frustrated and they think this thing doesn't work and they throw it at the window. If they only focused on what you see on the left hand side of your screen, a little bit of exercise, healthy sleep, drink some water and eat well, the result will happen. And that's what my final message is today is if you can think about ways in which you do the right things that hopefully I helped you with sort of understand some of those today, the result will come. And so there's return on investment in everywhere you look with wellness, um, and there's also value on investment. You're going to see people happier. They're going to be talking about different things um, differently. There's going to be the peer influence effect where someone's participating in something, and the peer will be influenced by that. And they'll they'll also appreciate um, participating in different things. So there's different things associated with wellness in the workplace. If you focus on doing the right things, the results are going to happen. So having faith in that is probably one of the tougher things to get your heads around, I know, but it does does help and it does does work. I'm going to offer now answering some of these questions. Um, I'm just going to double check my question box here to see if anything has come through. Please write down any questions that you have um, burning right now so I can answer them on the call. and. Uh, I'm just going to give you a couple minutes here to just jot some of those questions down under the question box. Or, if you would prefer, I can unmute you. No questions? No questions yet. So, um, the last slide then is just. Um, really focusing in on a promotion for exclusive to the lovers group. Um, we have created a corporate wellness membership platform that um, provides wellness to small, medium, and large organizations at an affordable um, investment. To celebrate World Obesity Day, which was yesterday, um, we uh, are offering uh, this promotion to you. My information is on the bottom of the screen if you do want more information. Um, we provide the resources, the materials, and professional guidance to strategize your wellness, your wellness plan. So it really does become um, a, an affordable way to really do it right. If you have any questions, though, on what you're currently doing, and if you see that I could help with or one of our team could help you strategize more thoroughly, I'd be more than happy to take that that on. 
I just have a question here. Suggestions on how to create a wellness committee. That's a great question. A really great way you can start to do that is if you know one or two people in your workplace that are have, a, have an interest in wellness, start there. The other strategy, if your morale is good within a workplace, then you can even send out an email or put a poster up and set a meeting date for anybody who's interested in sitting on a wellness committee. Um, more often than not, wellness uh, committees are people sit on several during the year, so they find that their their time is really limited. If you can really try to work together as a group, that's a really great way of doing it. So I would start with one or two people who have some interest in wellness that you know that are well respected and influential in your organization. It'd be even better if you had a manager or a senior manager who has an interest in it. It's really going to set that tone for you. So hopefully that helps. I know also other organizations that have done a little bit of a suggestion box, sort of an, um, more of an anonymous uh, question, who would like to sit on a wellness committee, and that has been also been beneficial for organizations too. You're welcome. Are there any other questions? There was one yesterday that I just wanted to mention. There was one lady who mentioned, how do you get a set of lazy ladies or men involved? And that was a, I thought that was a really, really great question. How can you get the unmotivated to do something? That is really the question. You'll get the healthy people doing this. How do you get the unhealthy people doing it? And it does come down to a couple of different things. This group was a smaller group. Office, I believe, was the industry and office setting. They wanted to do something, and so the suggestion really was, if you can get um, your group of people that you sit with, department or floor or room or whatever, wherever you're working, and get some ideas going on what they want to do, it really will start that uh, brainstorming on how you can start to implement some wellness initiatives within your workplace. So these, the, like we were talking about a step challenge and how to do an easy step challenge with different um, you know, recording different uh, things like if you had a Fitbit or if you had uh, a pedometer or if you had a phone app. There's several free apps out there that can help you track different things. You can also track time of exercise. So do minutes of exercise challenge. Um, or start simple. Do a salad day a week. Everybody brings a vegetable in, you make salads for lunch. Would be a really great way to sort of bring that team building morale um, into the workplace. So. Anything like that that's of interest, I mean, food, <laughs> as silly as it sounds, food is really, really, really powerful, and it can be used in a really positive way. Um, obviously, you want to keep the health side of it um, in the forefront of your message, but um, something as simple as healthy desserts. I mean, how we all love desserts, but what if the wellness committee put out a challenge to your department or a challenge to your organization on, we're having a healthy dessert potluck. After lunch on, this, on a Friday, um, here are some examples of healthy desserts. Pick a recipe and make it. So there are, again, certain things companies can do to really start to have that feel of, of wellness sort of um, and, and weave it through your culture. It does take time, though. I wouldn't. I, I told this particular lady, and I said, don't get frustrated if it doesn't work initially. Try it again another time, and just try different themes, and I'm, I'm sure you'll be able to help uh, help create some, some awareness within your work site. Are there any other questions there? No? Okay. So what we'll do is we'll end here. I will. I have recorded today, so we will be sending this out to all of you. Um, if there are any questions after you have gone through the information again or you get the, um, the slide deck or anything like that, I'm more than happy to answer any questions you have. Um, healthy, happy, healthy workplace month, and I encourage you to try hopefully something within your work site and let me know how it goes. Thanks so much for your time today, everybody. Have a superb afternoon. See you. Bye-bye.